mountains, beaches, a long coastline, waterfalls, forests. Odisha, an eastern Indian state on the Bay of Bengal, is endowed with incredible natural beauty. The forest area of Odisha is a hotspot of biodiversity, famous for its wildlife and wetland. Odisha has got 20 sanctuaries, and not only sanctuary, one national park. It's rich with wildlife. It has got Asia's largest brackish water lake, that is Chilka. It has got India's second largest mangrove forest, that is Bhitra Kanika. Highest density of crocodiles, three types of crocodiles. Sea crocodiles, saltwater crocodiles, and uh, sweetwater crocodiles, and Ghadial. In 145 square kilometer of area, we have 2,000 crocodiles. In this episode, we will travel throughout the state to explore some of its finest national parks and wildlife sanctuaries. So join us as we discover the natural wonders of Odisha, India's best kept secret. Odisha is also a haven for wildlife and ecotourism with ample chances of remarkable wildlife sightings. The different parks in the state are as varied as they are rewarding. The birding opportunities at places like Mangla Jodi and Chilika Lake are known as some of the best in all of Asia, drawing bird watching enthusiasts and wildlife photographers from the world over. The Bitterkanika National Park is also an exceptional place to explore, famous for its dense and wide mangroves and larger than life crocodiles. Located in the Kendrapara district of Odisha on the coast of the Bay of Bengal, Bitterkanika Wildlife Sanctuary was created in 1975. It covers an impressive area of 672 square kilometers. Sometime in the late 1990s, the core area of the park was declared a national park, and thus 145 square kilometers of the park got further protection. Located along the delta of River Brahmani, the lush region is famous for its large population of saltwater crocodiles and migratory birds. Like us, you can opt for a boating safari to take you into the second largest mangrove ecosystem in the country, sometimes called the Mini Amazon of India. This is the Bitterkanika National Park and I reached the Kola Ghat area where all these boats are parked and I'm gonna head over for a bit of a boat safari throughout the National Park and see if we can spot any crocs in here and uh, perhaps we'll get a good few, uh, few good bird photos as well. The Bitterkanika Wildlife Sanctuary is one of the five protected marine areas of the state and home to the world's largest congregation of saltwater crocodiles, which can be seen in the creeks of Bitter Kanika. Sighting of crocodiles, spotted deers and thousands of birds, including winter migrants from Central Asia and Europe, are very common here. We spot many crocodiles on the muddy banks of the river. What a majestic sight to behold! Some of the crocodiles in this park are more than 20 feet long and have even been given personal names. This one right here is called Kalia. Mangroves protect the land against both cyclones and tidal surges. The network of their roots prevent erosion and helps in stabilizing the banks, creeks and rivers in the park. The exposed banks of this river also reveal some interesting marine life, such as crabs and the aptly named mud skippers. We've reached the Bitterkanika National Park, which happens to have the second largest mangrove ecosystem in India. Now, we'll be staying overnight in this camp right here in the heart of the park at Dangamal. Now, it's easy to find a place to stay here overnight because you can just go online and book it. Uh, let me show you around. The camp at Dangmal is rather large, and after leaving the boat, a long promenade takes you away from the waterways towards the other buildings. I can see families enjoying the outdoors, and this fresh coconut vendor appears to be popular with human visitors and non-human primates alike.
The camp also has a crocodile hatchery and rearing complex. And another fenced in pond, which is home to Gori. She is the first white female saltwater crocodile to be hatched in the artificial hatchery, way back in 1975. She has been living here ever since. Perhaps the most interesting part about this camp is the museum. Huge skeletons of crocodiles have been put on display. One of them is nearly 20 feet long. There are also specimens of various snakes on display, such as the Indian rock python, king cobra and banded crate. I can see skulls of other animals like sambar, black buck and dolphins too. Another must do while in Dangmal is to put on your walking shoes and go for a hike. On the other side of the river from camp, there is a trek that leads several kilometers into the forest. The path starts out slightly muddy, but quickly turns more solid as we get further away from the river. After crossing a large open meadow, we reach an area rich in avian life. But to be frank, I think that the boat offers the best variety and opportunity for photography. Chilica is another place that has remained an all-time favorite with visitors, especially for those who enjoy bird watching. Situated in the extreme south of Puri and extending up to the district of Ganjam, Chilika is the largest brackish water lake in Asia. Every year as winter sets in, millions of migratory birds from different parts of the world such as Siberia and Russia flock to the lake, making it the largest wintering ground for birds in the subcontinent. To enjoy bird sightings, I went to Mangalajodi, a small village on the banks of Chilika Lake. It is considered to be a birding hotspot, and it's not hard to see why. When you are at Mangalajodi, start your day early. Find a spot and watch the sunrise. You can then indulge in a leisurely boat ride enjoying birding and take in the vast expanse of the lake. Some of the major species of colorful birds that can be found here are purple heron, purple swamp hen, black winged stilt and northern pintle ducks. The lake is home to many native birds, about 150 species of migratory birds, not to mention numerous types of weeds, insects and amphibians. It truly is one of its kind. Not just tourists, the place is a birding paradise for photographers. They come with their heavy kits and spend countless hours to capture those perfect shots. The serene atmosphere and green hills make it a terrific place to unwind and enjoy the sense of oneness with nature. After a long day of adventure you can rejuvenate at the Mangla Jodi Nature Camp, a 15 minute drive from the boating point. The Nature Camp houses 12 luxury cottages on a hill slope, such a unique setup. This nature camp was recently constructed and features modern amenities. There is also a complimentary boat ride for those staying at the camp.
I am pleased to find the rooms are spacious, economically priced, the package includes stay and meals, the staff is hospitable and make you feel at home. You can also put your feet up and enjoy the panoramic view of Mangla Jodi from the camp. The magical sunset on the horizons of the Blue Lagoon can also be best viewed from the cottages. Ecotourism for Odisha is, is a very important and a very strong segment of, of our tourism offering. We have 47 nature camps across the state at some of the most pristine and some of the most beautiful places that you will get to see in the country. Before you plan your trip to Chilika, let me share a pro tip. The best time to visit is during the winter season. That's when the migratory birds arrive. And so should you. Western Odisha Sambalpur district is located 275 kilometers from Bhubaneswar. The region is known for the Hiraku Dam that lies 16 kilometers from Sambalpur city. And the reservoir of this engineering marvel forms the largest artificial lake in Asia, covering a staggering area of 743 square kilometers. When the dam was constructed way back in 1956, it was the first post-independence river valley project in India and was inaugurated in 1957. It regulates the flow of the Mahanadi River that in turn irrigates 7.5 million hectares of land. To this day, the Hirakud Dam remains India's largest earthen dam. It is so large that standing on one side of the main gate to the crest of the dam, you cannot see the other side. It's nearly five kilometers away. There are also tourist sites developed on both sides of the main dam. On the north side, a ropeway takes tourists from the runoff to the crest of the dam, making it convenient to get to the watchtower on the top of the hill. The park covering the hilltop at Gandhi Minar has been developed extensively, with waterfalls and flowers planted all along the steps leading up to the watchtower. If you get to Hiroko Dam, you must see the watchtower. There is a motor inside the tower that makes the entire top structure rotate to give visitors a 360 degree view of the mighty expanse of water. This point offers the best view anywhere around here, where both the expanse of the reservoir and the downriver view are clearly visible. The dike roads of this reservoir are in great condition too. They are also popular as picnic spots for local residents who often come here to witness the sunset. Not a bad idea at all. I've come to the district of Sambalpur in Odisha and this is the Hirakud Dam. This dam was finished in 1956 and at the time it was the largest earthen dam in the world. To this day it remains India's longest dam and this is the right dike road. The reservoir itself is so large that looking out over it, it's almost like looking out over the ocean. You can't even see the other side. That's the scale of the Hirakud Dam. And this road, it actually continues all the way to Debrigar. And that's where we'll be going next. A visit to the Debrigar Nature Camp takes you a few kilometers inside the Debrigar Wildlife Sanctuary. mornings here at the camp are simply beautiful. It is a good place for families as well, with a children's park and butterfly garden right in the middle of the camp. This concrete bear sculpture is humongous and I imagine must be a hit with children. This is one of the most famous wildlife sanctuaries in India. Needless to say, wildlife sightings are a big draw. I am going to try my luck in an open jeep safari that will take me deep inside the forest. Debrigar Wildlife Sanctuary covers 347 square kilometers and is home to a large number of wild animals. Only a few kilometers into the safari we spot a bear foraging for food. How incredible! We move along and spot peacocks, monkeys and deer. And stop by the shore for a look at avian life.
The flora in this forest is conducive for sightings like no other park I've ever been to. And it's easy to see why so many visitors come here for the safaris. The ride takes me through the forest on a road that separates the heart of the sanctuary from the Hirakud Reservoir to the north. This creates fantastic conditions for spotting wildlife as animals frequently cross the road from the forest to the water and back again. We reach the end of the road and come upon a watchtower looking out over the treetops and the wide expanse of water at the Hirakud Reservoir. There are a few fishermen out on the reservoir working with their nets while others are bailing out water from their boat. Life seems to move at a relaxed pace here. It's peaceful, like a balm to the soul. When I planned my trip to Sambalpur, I was told do not miss the Debrigar Wildlife Sanctuary. And I have come here and traveled on the 15 kilometers of permissible trails throughout this sanctuary. And I am blown away by how many animal sightings I've had throughout this short stretch. Uh, it's getting late now in the day, so I'm gonna head back to camp and have an evening in camp, but I am very optimistic that I'll see perhaps even more wildlife on the way back to camp than I've seen coming out here as the sun is setting. It's time to go. We spot quite a few deer, so don't seem particularly disturbed by our presence just a few meters away. As the daylight begins to fade, we also get lucky with spotting Indian bison lurking in the forest. This is the largest species of wild cattle anywhere in the world, and not an animal you would like to run into on foot, as the guide tells me they can get aggressive. There's no dearth of wildlife sightings in this park, and at some stretches there are so many animals that few hundred meters, even way after the sun has set, making this experience truly special. Around 300 kilometers from Ubaneswar is Similipal in Mayurbanj district. It's a national silk cotton trees that bloom vividly in its forest. It's a place where nature binds you with its awe-inspiring beauty and calmness. A perfect place for solitude seekers. Similipal is home to a wide variety of flowering plants, amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals. Also, it holds the highest tiger population in the state. Together, they highlight the biodiversity richness of Similipal. But it's the magnificent waterfalls that draw hordes of tourists on a daily basis. I visited the Jaronda waterfall, located in the heart of the forest. It can be seen from a distance. Such a wonderful sight. Berihipani is another majestic waterfall that you must visit. The meandering rivers through the hills of the forest cascade down to create the magnificent Barihipani waterfall, where the water drops from a height of 400 meters. While you are at Similipal, don't miss the jungle safari. It takes you deep into the forests. It is as close to nature as you can get. You can't explore all of Similipal in a day. It is really vast so you can make night halts at a nature camp. I stayed at Kumari. There are a total of 14 cottages at the Kumari nature camp, made in different styles. All of them are comfortable. You can pick one according to your requirements. The price that you pay for the cottage includes your meals as well. The nature camp is managed by the local community, an initiative taken by the state government to empower villagers. And it's the warm hospitality that makes the stay even more wonderful. The unique thing about the ecotourism in Odisha is that it is managed by the community. So about 80% of the revenues that are generated go back to the community. Though the infrastructure is created by the government, it's handed over to the community and the community runs it. The camp has a few recreational activities, not just for adults, but for children as well. Abounding with hills, waterfalls and comfortable accommodation in the midst of forests, Similipal offers a wholesome experience to nature enthusiasts. If 
If you are short on time and don't want to travel all the way to Similipal from Bhubaneswar, I can recommend another destination, Satkusia. It is relatively closer, at a distance of around 120 kilometers from the capital city of Odisha. Satkusia is the meeting point of two biogeographic regions of India, the Deccan Peninsula and the Eastern Ghats. The magnificent gorge ecosystem is emerging as an ideal holiday destination for nature lovers. We are staying at the Satkusia Sands Resort in Badmul. Surrounded by the jungles of Satkusia Tiger Reserve, the resort is located on the foothills of majestic mountains facing the Satkusia Gorge, where the magnificent Mahanadi meanders through the golden sandbars. The eco-resort has a wide range of accommodation options for you to choose from. You can either choose to stay in a luxurious air-conditioned cottage built on a mountain slope facing the Satkusia Gorge, or you can opt for a Swiss cotton tent pitched on the sandbar of River Mahanadi. Feel like getting some exercise? People can indulge in different activities, like cycling or how about trying out a canopy walk. There are also provisions for you to play outdoor games. You can also take out time to enjoy boating in the Satkusia Gorge. If you look around, you can spot some wildlife too. For entertainment, local folk dance is organized for visitors. Lunch and dinner arrangements are made under the open sky. While the eco-resort is bustling with activity during the day, it's the warmth of cozy tents, the fragrance of wild flowers and the sun setting on the horizon that brings the beautiful day to an end. Next week our journey of discovering Odisha continues. They say there's no better way to understand a culture than through its food. And we are going to put that theory to the test. Stay connected with the world through Weon. Like the page on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter for new alerts. Instagram for videos and images. And the website for the latest news, views and analysis. Weonews.com. World is one. South Asia Diary with me, Maria Mordak, only on We On World is One. One World Trade Center that is the one uh, where the, the impact. The cause of India's freedom for many years. I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. America is a constant work in your progress. <laughs> Oh!